Good evening, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, scouts and scouters. My name is Joshua Mazik, proud Eagle Scout of Troop 449. It is my pleasure to be the master of ceremonies for this Eagle Court of Honor, honoring James Hertzberg and Aiden Rupert for attaining Scout's highest rank, Eagle Scout. This is a great moment worthy of celebration. Tonight's Court of Honor is being live streamed and recorded, so please keep that in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors and to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remove all non-scouting headwear. Color Guard, advance. Scout salute, those not in uniform, please place your hand over your heart. Color Guard, post the colors. Color Guard, honor your colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, please return to rank. Scouts, please remain standing for the Scout Oath and Law. All others, please be seated. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. I'd like to invite Mr. Robert Elliott, Northern Star Council Religious Emblems Coordinator, to lead us in an invocation. Everyone, please stand for the invocation. We have accomplished. Help us recognize that none of us travel this journey on our own. Bless all the scouts and adults who provide leadership, mentorship, and support for the scouts in this troop. Thank you, Lord, for your constant guidance and support, even though we may not recognize it as it occurs. Bless our troop and all who gather here tonight. Amen. You may be seated. In my role as the Council of Religious Emblems Coordinator and a member of the BSA's National Religious Relationships Committee, I would like to make a few comments about the Religious Emblems Program. The BSA has relationships with many religions that have youth religious education programs, including most Protestant Christian denominations. This is in keeping with a part of the Scout Law about doing my duty to God and the 12th point of the Scout Law, which is being reverent. It is important to know that while the BSA and the Girl Scouts USA allow Scouts to wear religious emblems on their uniforms, they are religious awards, not BSA or Girl Scout awards. As such, they are earned in coordination with a religious congregation. These religious emblems are sometimes called God and Country Awards because years ago, the awards actually included the words God and Country on them, but they do not anymore. Um, Many churches who sponsor religious emblems classes will happily include non-church youth who would like to obtain education about their religion. In most faith scouts, BSA members, what we used to call Boy Scouts, can earn two religious emblems based on their school, age, or grade. For example, Protestants can earn God in church uh, while in middle school and God in life while in high school. Cub Scouts can also earn two grade appropriate uh, religious emblems. Scouts who earn all four receive the Four Star Award. James Hertzberg received the Four Star Award. And it is on the green medal that is on his chest. So um, uh, later this evening, you can take a look at that. It is very, very rare. If you would like more information about the religious emblems programs for Protestants, 
please speak with either Cindy Yanchuri or you may talk to Lori or David Herzberg, and they will put me in touch with, put them in touch with me. Or Cindy, are you still going to be involved in this program? All right, excellent. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. I now call Mr. John Stevenson, Scoutmaster of Troop 449, to convey this court of honor. I now declare this Court of Honor in session. Today we have the honor and the pleasure of recognizing James Hertzberg and Aidan Rupert for their award of Eagle Rank. This is an important and serious matter. The attainment of this award is made possible through the assistance of those with the candidate today, his Scoutmaster, troop leaders, fellow Scouts, parents, family, friends, and members of the community. This is an occasion for pride and joy as well as a time for serious reflection. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. I would now like to invite Mr. David Hertzberg, Camping Coordinator of Troop 449, to come forward to share a few remarks about when James and Aiden were Cub Scouts. Good evening. It all began more than a decade ago. James and Aiden joined Cub Pack 449 and formed the core of Den 6. I was their den leader on this first part of the journey through scouting. We were never a large den, four or five at most, but always there was Aiden and James. Being a small den, they reaffirmed for me it is not the size of the group that matters, it is the interest, desire, and energy that the individuals bring to the group that determines the outcome. While in Cub Scouts, they went to Filippo Scout Camp for Polar Cubs in the winter and Camp Aquila in the summer. When they reached the rank of Weebelows, they, ex they attended Weebelows Experience at Stern Scout Camp on a cold and wet weekend very typical of our campouts. <laughs> but they had fun nonetheless. The theme of the Weebelows experience that year was Pathway to Eagle, a very appropriate one this evening. They also both attended Camp Navajo at Tomahawk Scout Camp that summer before they joined Troop 449. When we were at Camp Navajo, which was over several days, I found out how severe Aiden's food allergies actually are. When an ingredient was missed on one of the meals and the episode sent him to the local hospital in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. But that didn't stop Aiden. He, was, he not only returned to camp, but finished out the remaining two days taking part in all of the activities just like the other boys. For myself, I knew that James was really into camping when he and I went tenting for a few nights in the Smoky Mountains National Park. Upon arrival, I informed him that there were no showers at the campground, and he had one word reply, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> when Aiden and James were Weebelows, they were required to complete seven activity badges, kind of the Cub Scout equivalent of merit badges, seven out of 20. Mr. Rupert and I asked the boys if they were interested in completing all 20, and they were. So we set about accomplishing this goal, and they did finish all 20 before they were done. In a way, I look at it now as a precursor to how Aiden addressed the merit badges when he was a Boy Scout. And you will be able to see that when you see his sash, or I should say sashes. One thing is, they were always learning, especially when it came to cooking. On one camp out, the amount of oil used to make a Dutch oven dessert was misread. It said two teaspoons, sorry, two tablespoons, but instead it got changed to two cups. <laughs> you could hear the peach cobbler cooking in the Dutch oven, 
like a fresh bench of french fries at McDonald's. <laughs> Oftentimes, something that was supposed to be grilled end up more charred. But the boys made do, they survived, and they too will have stories to tell. For myself, back in 2016 on MEA weekend, James and I went camping up at Itasca State Park. We enjoyed no mosquitoes, since it was below freezing each night, and we hiked on many of the trails around the park. But one trail we didn't hike on that weekend is called Eagle Scout Trail. I told James, we won't hike that trail on this trip, we will come back and hike it after you make Eagle. And now, we will be making that hike this summer. In closing, it has been a great experience, a fun time, and once again, Aiden, James, congratulations on making the highest rank in scouting, Eagle Scout. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hertzberg. Eagle Scouts, we remember well when you first came to the base of the cliff and you, how you looked up with ambition and, de and determination. Look back for a moment. Look down the cliff you have climbed. Look at the experience you have encountered in your ascent. These experiences should not be forgotten. You should profit by making sure these ad adverse experiences do not occur again. Experience is a valuable teacher if you heed this lesson. Remember when you took your first step upon the trail that leads upward. With that first step, you began to build yourself physically, mentally, and morally. You started living the scout oath and law. All the while you were on the trail, we watched you study, and we say you learn by doing. And I have James and Aiden please come forward to light the candles. First, you are only a scout. A scout is trustworthy, a scout is loyal. Next, as you started living the scout oath and law, your brother scouts called you a tenderfoot scout. You learned about the three parts of the oath, duty to God and country, duty to others, and duty to self. A scout is helpful, a scout is friendly. Soon, you reached the first ledge, and there you were greeted by a large group of second-class scouts. To reach the rank of second class, a scout learns to work with the members of his patrol, and he begins to develop patrol, sp patrol spirit. A scout is courteous, a scout is kind. Some like you were stopping to catch their breath before continuing along the trail. You began to study more, you worked harder, and almost before you knew it, you came to another ledge the ledge where the first, scout, the first class scouts dwell. When a scout reaches the rank of first class in Troop 449, he is really first class. He is an ex expert in the outdoor skills of camping, cooking, hiking, and first aid. A scout is obedient. A scout is cheerful. There you found a tempting green meadow by a crystal clear stream bathed in the sun. Here you were tempted to remain. Yes, you could have remained there to live in first-class glory, but your ambition stirred you on. We remember your advancement to Star Scout. A Star Scout learns to work with younger boys in the troop, passing along the knowledge he has gained. A Scout is thrifty. A Scout is brave. The trail from first class to star rank was not as difficult as it had seemed. This spurred you on, and again, you climbed farther. The trail was steeper and less worn, Fewer scouts seemed to be headed in your direction. You looked down and saw the crowds below you. You looked up and saw a few above you. And with the same determination with which you started your climb, you continued up the trail. Scout life demonstrates, or a life scout demonstrates leadership in the troop and takes part in community service projects. Soon, you are in the rank of life. For a scout is clean. A scout is reverent. The heart badge was unplaced on your uniform. You will never forget the thought in your heart. 
The feeling has been experienced by all scouts on reaching the ledge of life, Scout. Now I am close to the eagle. I will carry on. The trail becomes tougher, but more interesting. The original principles, the scout oath, and law now have a fuller meaning. You understand, your understanding of them was greater. The rank of Eagle Scout is scouting's highest award. The Eagle Scout must earn the specified number of merit badges and must plan, develop, and carry out an extensive service project, giving leadership to others. He, is, he must also serve in his troop as an officer for a specified time. Yes, Eagle Scouts, we have watched your character unfold and become more manly. We have watched your leadership expand into a valuable asset. We have watched your mind develop and your wisdom increase. We have watched all these things in you, and now that you are the, on the threshold of your goal, we welcome you, for you have done your climbing in a true scout-like manner. James Zane, please return to your seats. I now call on Mr. Mike Abbott, former Scoutmaster of Troop 449, to share a few remarks about James and Aiden. Hello. As a young college student, on my resume for accomplishments, I stated that I was an Eagle Scout. During one job interview, the human resources person asked me, What's an Eagle Scout? What does scouting do? As I fumbled through an answer, I thought to myself, what a great question. What does scouting do? I ended up getting a job and never thought about that question for a long time. It's about 25 years later when my oldest son, starting Cub Scouts, before I thought again about that question, what does scouting do? At first my answer was scouting teaches young men and now women love and respect for nature, camping skills, and many other useful skills and knowledge. Soon I realized the outdoors is just the setting for what scouting really does. Scouting teaches leadership skills. What is leadership? One definition of leadership is organizing a group of people to achieve a common goal. During a typical camp out, the goals are simple. Set up camp, cook meals, clean up, organize, don't lose anybody, including the adults, and most importantly, have fun. How does, scouting teach, how does scouting teach leadership? First off, scouting starts small. As an example, scout, scouting starts with teaching basic camping skills and knowledge at the earliest levels. Which scouts here remember the five basic knots, how to tie them, and when to use them? At first, the scouts learn how to tie those knots. Soon after, that same scout is learning how to teach knot tying using the edge method. And before long, that same scout is teaching younger scouts how to tie those knots. Another example is meal preparation. Initially, the youngest scouts stir the batter, but soon they are planning, soon they are planning the menu, buying the grocery, flipping the pancakes, and cleaning up. Scouting then builds upon those small beginnings, and soon young scouts are using those knot tying skills to set up camp and cooking skills to feed hungry campers. At this point, a scout is a candidate for becoming a patrol leader, a position that requires beginning leadership skills to get his or her patrol moving in the correct direction to achieve their goal, whether it's setting up camp, cooking a meal, or going on a hike. As a scout continues his or her career, they can become the senior patrol leader, the scout in charge of the troop activity. During a camp out, the senior patrol leader will assist and teach patrol leaders, and the senior patrol leader will act as a liaison between the scouts and the adult chaperones. We are here tonight to celebrate two young men who achieved the pinnacle of scouting, the Eagle Rank. What does, it become, what does it take to become an Eagle Scout? It takes hard work, determination, and of course, leadership. The Eagle Scout candidate must propose, plan, and execute an Eagle project that will require him or her to use their leadership skills to organize a group of people to accomplish a goal. 
Congratulations, James and Aiden. You have both learned leadership skills and how to use them. Be a leader, and you will achieve your highest goals. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. I now call on Mr. Stevenson to come forward. Will the honor guard please escort the candidates James and Eden to the front of the church? During your time in scouting, you learned to, and lived the Cub Scout promise, the law of the pack, the Cub Scout model, and of course, the Scout Oath, law, motto, and slogan. Each time you were presented with a new code of conduct, the words were unfamiliar, and you suggested, struggled to memorize them. Later, of course, you recited them as easily as you repeat your own names. They and the lessons they taught became part of you. Tonight you will repeat the Eagle Scout promise. Again, some of the words will be unfamiliar, but as you live out the life of an eagle, they too will become part of you. Making a new promise does not mean that you should forget all the other promises. Instead, I challenge you to remember and to live by the promises that you've made as a scout, all the codes you've agreed to follow. I'd like all Eagle Scouts in the audience to please stand and rededicate themselves by repeating the Eagle Scout promise with our new Eagle Scouts. You'll find the Eagle Scout promise printed on the inside of your program. Please make the Scouts kind and repeat after me. I reaffirm my allegiance to the three promises of the Scout Oath. I reaffirm my allegiance to the three promises of the Scout Oath. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself the obligations and responsibilities of Eagle Scout. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself the obligation or responsibilities of the Eagle Scout. On my honor, I will do my best to make my training an example. On my honor, I will do my best to make my training an example. My rank and my influence count strongly for better scouting. My rank and my influence count strongly for better scouting. And for better citizenship in my troop, my community, and in my contacts with other people. And for better citizenship in my troop, in my community, and in my contacts with other people. To this I pledge my sacred honor. To this I pledge my sacred honor. To Will the honor guard please escort the Eagle Scout parents and grandparents forward? Aiden, the symbol of your success is the Eagle Scout badge, which I now present to you, your mother. Your mother will in turn pin the badge over your heart.
Eden, the symbol of your success. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Eden, now in recognition of the many hours of patient guidance given to you in your efforts, your pin, the eagle mother's pin, to your mother. You will give your father the eagle pen as a sign of his extraordinary wisdom, guidance, and, ex and encouragement. James, the symbol of your success is the eagle badge, which I will now present to your mother. Your mother will in turn pin the badge over your heart. James, now in recognition for the many hours of patient guidance given to you in your efforts, you will pin the eagle mother's pin on your mother. James, you will give your father the eagle pin as a sign of his extraordinary wisdom, guidance, and encouragement. Among James' treasured companions on his scouting journey, and really on his whole life's journey, have been his grandparents, Lila Hertzberg, as well as his grandparents who are no longer with us. Roger Hertzberg, a lifelong member of Boy Scout Troop 120 in South Minneapolis, and Beverly and Verald Waldron. Verald was a Boy Scout in Huron, South Dakota. At this time, James, will you pin the Eagle grandparents pin on his grandmother. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Eagle Scouts, please stay here while your parents return to their seats. I would now like to invite Mr. Stevenson to present the honorees Eagle charges.
I've had the distinct pleasure of being both James and Aiden's Cub Master as well as now Scout Master. Um, it seems I'm only put in charge of these boys just to see them move on to the next level. So with that, I'm asking both the boys in their Eagle Charge to become Merit Badge Counselors and not leave me this time. <laughs> I ask them to come back, enjoy the things that they've enjoyed so much. They've already made one camp out as adult leaders, eating the adult meal. <laughs> so I ask them to come back and pick a merit badge and teach the other Boy Scouts and to continue on their great legacy, as you can both see by the amount of badges both of them have. So thank you, James and Aiden, and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. At this point in the Court of Honor, the Eagle Scouts would like to make a few remarks. James will make the remarks first, and can you please return to your seat? James, step forward. Here, just sit here. <clears throat> first of all, thank you all for coming to our Eagle Court of Honor. This has been a very long path that both Aiden and myself have walked for a very long time, as you have undoubtedly been able to pick up based off of the plural of speeches that have happened thus far. As such, there have been many events that I look back on fondly. Starting as far back as some of my first Pinewood Derbies way back in Cub Scouts, I even remember the first time when Aiden's wheel went flying off of his bullet bill car when it came down the track. <laughs> I can still remember my first camp out as an actual Boy Scout, where I was taught how to make peas, and we played spoons in the basement of the cabin we were at. I can even remember my first two years where we went to the Eagle Cave, where we slept in and explored an extensive cave system for the weekend. More recently, I remember going on Ookpik Northern Tier and Sea Base. As you could expect, the two experiences were on vastly different ends of the spectrum. One was akin to that of a resort with ping pong each night, while the other was a grueling tussle with the elements. One was going to bed with a hot meal and warm cup of cider, while the other was likely going to sleep with little more than a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I suppose what I am trying to say with these last couple sentences here is that Ookpik Northern Tier is by far the best high adventure that all the younger scouts should be begging and looking forward to going on. Now, as I look around, I see some faces that are new to me. I see, I see others I have known for only a short amount of time, and many I have known for years. However, I know that all of you are here because of one simple reason, as I'm sure my counterpart will agree with me. It is because all of you have helped us in some way along our path, whether it be pushing us to achieve the next rank or even serving as a role model and reminder of what we could one day become. As such, I would like to address all in attendance as, all, as, we, as well as all who may not be here tonight, and thank all of you for your help and guidance as the both of us have walked the path towards this great milestone in our lives. So without further ado, thank you very much. At this time, I would like to recognize four people by presenting them with the Eagle Mentor pin. Would Mr. Rupert, Mr. Plants, Mr. Elliott, and Mr. Detmer please come forward if you are in attendance. Mr. Rupert for always giving me the words of encouragement that I needed in order to push myself to achieve the next rank. Mr. Brian Plants, for teaching me leadership and teamwork. And Mr. Elliott, for guiding me in bettering myself in both my scouting and my faith. And Mr. Bob Detmer, for teaching me how to plan ahead in life.
Thank you, James. You may return to your seat. I now call on Aiden to come forward and make his remarks. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, it's, it's very easy to just not to show up to things. Um, and as, as you are all gathered here today for me and James's great achievement, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I did, I did in Boy Scouts. Um, <laughs> when I think about my great memories uh, through scouting, I usually think of the high adventure that I went on at Ookpik, which James uh, touched on uh, during his speech, um, and how great of an experience that was to be out in the outdoors in the, in the blistering cold um, in such an in, inviting environment. And I also think of Tomahawk, the week-long scout camp where Boy Scouts will go to learn and get a lot of different merit badges, learn different skills, get different merit badges. And how after I went to, after the incident that happened at um, Tomahawk, uh, all, of the, all of the staff would know who I was and, and knew how, how not, not how to treat me, but, <laughs> but they knew who I was and they were, and they were very friendly with me. And I will always remember and always cherish their kindness with me and how, and how much that meant to me. I'd also touch briefly on my merit badges, the all of them. <laughs> it is a major accomplishment to get the merit badges at, because you only need 22 of them to get Eagle Scout. Uh, the 13 required and the rest are elective. So getting all of these elective merit badges was no small feat. And with that, I'd like to call forth uh, Mr. Uh, Abbott and, Ms. and Mr. Brian Myers to, to administer the uh, mentor pins. For Mr. A for Mr. Mike Abbott for always pushing me to get what I to achieve my highest potential, and for Mr. Brian Myers for pushing me uh, to, for helping incentivize me to get all of the merit badges. <laughs> Thank you, Aiden. You may return to your seat. I would now like to invite Mr. Rupert, Rupert, excuse me, Advancement Coordinator for Troop 449, to please step forward and make a presentation to the Eagle Scouts from the troop. Yes, I finally ended that part of my life where I too need glasses. <laughs> so I hope I can get through this. I didn't earlier, and David started to choke me up, so maybe I proved to my wife tonight that I do have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so good evening. For those who do not know me, my name is David Rupert. I am the Advancement Coordinator here for Troop 449. But more importantly than that, I am now the parent 
of an Eagle Scout and the mentor to another Eagle Scout. I've had the privilege in my role to be a part of previous Eagle Courts of Honour, presenting those Scouts with gifts from the troop. However, this one has a lot more meaning. I've watched James and Aidan grow from boys to the young men that you see before you today. They were together as den mates in Cub Scouts and now stand together as Eagle Scouts today. Grey Wolf, or National Youth Leadership Training, known as NYLT for short, is leadership training for youth. Both boys and girls are eligible to attend, and this is not just the Scouts BSA program. Youth from ships, crews, and troops are all eligible and are nominated by their unit leaders. Aidan and James were both selected to attend the same year. And Grey Wolf training is held at Fred C. Anderson, and it lasts a week, with the training being offered four times a summer. Without any discussion between Aidan and James, they ended up attending the same session. In preparation for tonight's event, I've been reflecting on my memories here in Troop 449, all of the events and experiences that I've been a part of, with and without the troop, with and without my son. While tonight is about two scouts earning the highest rank in scouting, for me it has been an amazing journey that I have been on as well. In 2018, after taking a year to decide, I attended Wood Badge which is a leadership course for adult leaders, basically the adult version of Grey Wolf. This intensive course is taken over two weekends a month apart. At the end of the course, you are personally required to complete tickets or tasks that help scouting within an 18 month time limit. Once completed, you receive the neckerchief I'm wearing today uh, and includes a leather thong and some beads. I am the first Troop 449 adult leader to complete the wood badge and I'm immensely proud of that. In 2021, during the pandemic, I was fortunate enough to be selected to return on staff on a wood badge training session. Now I'm gonna self edit here. One of my participants from my patrol is here this evening who drove all the way up from Mankato, so thank you, Tim. Um, I gotta find where I went. Um, and I will be working with those uh, attendees until this Thanksgiving when their windows to complete their tickets expire. After discussing my experience at Wood Badge with David Hertzberg, I was excited when he told me that he had signed up. David also persevered through the pandemic to complete his tickets and was rewarded recently with his neckerchief and beads. While tonight will uh, signify the end of this chapter in my scaling career in Troop 449, this is definitely not the end of my scaling career. I am still involved in my youngest son, Gavin's Troop 384 out of Richfield, and I'm so honored that there are actually, again, I'll self-edit here, so many of you are in attendance this evening. Thank you for coming. Um, as an adult leader, as well as being on the council STEM committee, there are still plenty of scouting memories to be made for me in the future. At this time, I would like to also thank my wife, Paula. Without your support, I would not have been able to do all of this for our sons or for the Troop 449 Scouts. For those of you in the audience tonight that are on the fence about becoming an adult leader, I would tell you that this program gives back way more than you put in. I would like to thank the Hertzberg family, and especially you, David. David was a den leader for James, as he mentioned earlier. I got to self-edit here as I go. For Aidan and James all those years ago, David would navigate me through the Cub Scouting system, explaining to me how to use scout tracks and what was needed for Cub Scout events and campouts. David continues that today with helping me understand everything that is required as we prepare for our postponed backpacking trek to Philmont this summer. We partnered to create a plan for the boys when they decided that they wanted to earn all the activity pens as weeblos rather than the minimum required to complete Arrow of Light. Both boys achieved that goal. Aiden then wanting to build on that, or maybe just to keep up with Oliver Hess, decided early on that he was gonna earn all 137 merit badges. Unfortunately, due to COVID, Aiden's progression slowed, or should I say stopped, in 2020. I tried in vain several times to encourage him on earning the last 15 merit badges, bringing online and modified in-person event opportunities to him with no interest. In the end, Scoutmaster Bucky, or Brian Reiners as it's written on his driver's license, talked to Aiden, and with renewed vigor and only a few weeks before his 18th birthday, Aiden completed those remaining merit badges, earning the last one fly fishing two days before his 18th birthday. As his parent, being at Many Point last summer and watching Aiden backpacking 20 plus miles a day on consecutive days was impressive. Aiden, you showed grit and determination to complete this task 
and was very impressive to watch. I now know what you are capable of with the right motivation. While Aidan left his last few merit badges to the end, James left his eagle required merit badges to the end. <laughs> David and I had spoken about James's path to eagles several times over the past couple of years. It appeared that James was going to become a perpetual star scout, which is still fine, but was not what James was telling me that he wanted. I remember making an agreement with James and Greg, and they would complete an Eagle Required Merit Badge before Thanksgiving in 2020. I even gave James an extension <laughs> until the end of the year and still no Merit Badge. James needed just one more Eagle Required Merit Badge to be able to earn the Life Scout rank. David was growing more anxious as the Scout meetings passed, thinking James was going to miss the window, the minimum window at Life Scout that is required to be eligible for Eagle Scout. But James earned that Eagle Merit Badge and earned Life Scout with a month to spare. Once James reached Life Scout, I talked to him again about trying to space out his Eagle Required Merit Badges and not leaving it until the last minute. However, that was not the case. <laughs> James left it until 24 days before his 18th birthday to earn all six of the remaining Eagle Required Merit Badges but to take it one step further, James earned eight merit badges in that 24-day window. James was very impressive to watch. Uh, James, this was very impressive to watch and be a part of. I guess all you need in life is an impeding deadline. <laughs> I wish that I could say these scouts were the only ones that were bringing me blue cards as their 18th birthdays were approaching. There were many eagles before James and Aiden that were leaving the Merit Badge Counselor stopping by my house and respectively requesting that I enter them in the scout book as their birthdays were only days away. I see some of those sitting in the back tonight, by the way. <laughs> my advice to all you scouts in the audience tonight, do not wait until you're almost 18 to complete your Eagle Scout rank. Your parents will definitely appreciate that. As I, look around the round, as I look around the room tonight, I see current and former Troop 449 leadership once again, you have shown up, up to a scouting event to provide your support and encouragement to Aidan and James. I would like to acknowledge your guidance and support that you have provided the troop, the scouts, my son, as well as myself over the years. Without your involvement in this troop and my family's lives, I'm not sure where we would be today. Thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do for Troop 449. To the previous scouts of Troop 449, thank you for also showing up to congratulate Eden and James on ach for achieving Eagle. I also want to acknowledge Cindy Yanchuri, who is here tonight. Cindy, your leadership and your uh, support to this troop as the Charter Org Rep and the representative of Advent United Methodist Church is amazing. You pretty much let us do anything we want. Lastly, to Joshua Masick, a Troop 449 Eagle Scout, for agreeing to be the MC this event. You are the first name out of both James and Aiden's mouth when this event was planned. And of course, you said yes. The time has come for me to do my last official task as the Advancement Coordinator for Troop 449. James and Aiden, can you please return to the front of the stage? So Troop 449 rewards Eagle Scouts that hold an Eagle Court of Honour with a walking stick. Aidan and James, take this on your journey through life on whichever path your life takes you. Use this to create new memories and hopefully it will serve as a reminder of your memories being a member of PAC 449 and Troop 449. Remember that once an Eagle Scout, always an Eagle Scout. Return to your seats. Thank you, Mr. Rupert. We will now retire the colors. Please stand. Honor guard, advance. Honor guard, retrieve the colors. Scout salute. Those on uniform, please place your hand over your hearts.
Honor guard, return to rank. Two. We invite everyone present to congratulate the new Eagle Scouts, their parents and grandparents, and join us for refreshments in the Fellowship Hall. Thank you for joining us today. I now declare this Eagle Court of Honor closed. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna have our committee chair, Mr. Steve Warmer, Warner, give a short announcement. Very good, I'm uh, the troop committee chair. I just wanted to make a quick acknowledgement. Um, uh, Mr. Rupert mentioned Pastor Cindy. We've had an amazing uh, partnership here with Advent United Methodist Church. If you look, the two Eagle projects that were done by our scouts, we're done here. It facilitates that in an amazing way. We're going to be able to continue to meet here, but we've added to that partnership. Standing next to Sydney is a, a post commander, Wayne Bierman, uh, with the American Legion Post here uh, in Egan. They have agreed to become our charter partner. It's going to add some additional volunteer opportunities, some patriotism that we can weave in. Uh, with the troop and potentially some scholarships as well. So if you get a moment, please thank both Pastor Cindy and uh, Commander Beerman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Now we can go eat and drink. <laughs>